How's it going everyone? It's Derek Lamru, and in today's video we're gonna break down a comedy short film that I shot back in 2019. All right, let's get into it. She would go sleeping bag to sleeping bag and she always had this funny over the top laugh, you know? All right, so just a little bit of background on this shoot here. So the idea was this was a bar scene in the short film. Uh, it was a conversation between two people. Uh, the one gentleman was walking in and the one gentleman was the bartender in the scene. So what we needed to do was establish the scene with a wide shot that was decided to be a dolly into the scene. And then we mixed it up with some over the shoulders during their dialogue for the part of the short film in the bar scene. We had a bar, we had two actors and we were bringing those together um, but we only had about a four hour window at the location. So when we had to set up lighting and things like that, it needed to be relatively quick turnaround so that we can move from one setup to the other. Um, and we only had a relatively small crew. And this lighting setup actually, I was testing out uh, two new lights at the time. Uh, back in 2019, I had the Ledgo G260 and the Ledgo S150. And both of those two were our primary lights. And then we had a couple Pavo tubes as well, that, and we'll go through that in a second. The power that's needed for these LEDGO lights is really just off house power. So that was good. We didn't have to rent any generators or have any external GE available. All right, so if we look at the lighting diagram here, um, we can see that our, our bar scene was set up. So the bar is on the left hand side of the frame here and the camera's kind of pointing towards the bar in this Y. So in the background, we're catching a couple of the pool tables. There was some practicals overhead, some overhead lights, and then some of those spotlights that are over top of pool tables. So when we were setting up the lighting, we wanted to try to emulate the, the bar lighting and not make it seem like there was any lights in the scene and just more playing off the lights that existed. Um, so in the opening shot, the, the key light is actually coming from the back side almost backlighting the talent as they're walking in. And then we have a couple Pavo tubes overhead and then bouncing in. Just because we have such a wide frame, it was kind of hard to get anything in the frame. And then for the over the shoulders, we kind of follow your standard rule of, you know, creating that nice Rembrandt lighting. For the, the main over the shoulders, we bring in the lights a little bit closer, but just to give you some sense for the wide here, we have the Ledgo S150 and the G260 going through an eight by eight of China silk, which was just loose hung on a painter's pole. And then we have a four foot Pavo tube, which was matched, color matched to the overheads, just like the G260 was. And then we have a two foot Pavo tube, just bouncing into an ultra bounce, just to even out some of the levels on the opposite side of our subjects here. And that's really about it. So we just have the two lights going through the eight by eight China silk, and then we have uh, two Pavo tubes set up. When we take a look at this opening scene here, so you can see the practicals in the background that were already existing. These are all the practicals that were already in the scene. So we wanted to play off those practicals with the lights that we were bringing in. We can see that our lights are kind of adding this nice edge to our subject here and to this subject here. And then we have some nice elements in the background where we can see these little pings of light. We ended up having to unscrew a couple of the bulbs in the room just so that we could leave some lights on so it didn't fall off the darkness in the background. Cause you can see back here, we wanted a little bit of level to shine through. Um, Cause if we didn't, it was just kind of like pitch black behind them. And then the only, the only other challenge here was that the, to bring in the lights any closer, the bar, was actually in our way. So we had to kind of maneuver the eight by eight around the bar, which was just out of frame over here, and then bouncing some light into that. And obviously we couldn't put any lights on the other side because you can clearly see him walking through there. The wide shot here, we have the dolly goes in, they shake hands, and then we cut in for the over the shoulders. So the over the shoulder of our visitor here, we've brought the lights around now. So now we have our our key light here, and it's kind of going like this on our subject. And for the reverse of that, we have the key light kind of in the same spot as it was when we did the opening dolly. And then we have the edge light here, which is providing that nice back edge on our subject. In this frame, one of the things I really like is this the practical kind of sneaks in here. You get a nice little highlight ping, which makes that, uh, that background a little bit more interesting. Again, it's not falling off to darkness. If we would have turned the practicals off, it would have just fallen completely to darkness and it wouldn't have been the mood we were going after. 
Um, and then this shot was a little bit tricky because we had the TV in the background. So we wanted to be careful of reflections. You can see a reflection in the TV, but that's actually a reflection of one of the practicals in the room. So, you know, that's okay, we can deal with that. And in terms of the light output, all the lights were set to 100% other than the edge light above our bartender. I believe, again, it's been a couple years, but that one was dimmed down to about 80% on a dimmer but all the other lights were at 100%. We just needed the, we needed the output. Uh, this setup took us approximately an hour and a half to set up. Again, there was only about four people, including the director and myself. So we didn't have a ton of bodies to help us set things up. So about an hour and a half to set up. And then we were filming for about an hour and then pack up. So again, we kind of had the location for about a four hour window. Um, so making the best use of that as possible. We didn't want to take away too much time from the short film script because that was about a minute of dialogue that they had to get through and we needed various coverage, wides, tights, mediums, like you saw here. So we really wanted the setup to be as quick as possible so that we can move on to the next scene later that day. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more breakdowns. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.